Welcome to the uh, 83rd Leadership Leaders Lecture on a very interesting topic. I would say very counterintuitive uh, and very uh, uh, surprising, I would say, the you know, the contours of this one. And uh, we will have uh, Kanika Mohan Saxena who will be uh, you know, taking us through this wonderful topic uh, on uh, double impact. I mean, right, uh, but uh, it's on uh, digital content and two-sided market. And before I hand over the platform to Kanika, let me have the pleasure of introducing her to all of you. And you, she, like I've written in the chat, box, she comes to the last year, you know, 21 years of experience in the entertainment and uh, telco industries. And she's a digital content and monetization uh, strategist. Very rare, by the way. You know, content is okay, but then monetization is even rarer. Uh, a strategist where, who builds strategic partnerships and forges alliances across the diverse domains. She has a track record of driving and delivering key business management. One of telecom operators, VI, that is Vodafone Idea Limited, and some of the topmost entertainment brands in India, such as Fox Star Studios, Walt Disney, Sony Entertainment Television, ZTV, Balaji Motion Pictures, and WPP Communication. And as the VP uh, uh, at you know, uh, VI, that is at uh, uh, doing the you know, uh, role of uh, digital content at VI, she leverages content as a strategic tool and delivers a VI's overall business objective for the highly competitive uh, telco environment in the Indian market landscape, consisting of subscribers from all genres, cultures, languages, and ethnicity. She leads the uh, end-to-end transformation of VI's entertainment products, including VI app, VI MTV, and VI music, and manages multiple revenue generation, marketing, and monetization portfolios. She's also, apart from her you know, professional responsibilities and her, uh, 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 you know, the, the, what I would say, uh, all the things that she, you know, she and her you know, team drives at VI, she's also passionate about scuba diving and holds the prestige yeah, Paddy, Master's Scuba Diver Trainer Certification, which reflects uh, her curiosity, adventure, adventure sport, and gratitude for life. She always uh, is eager to learn new skills and export new business. And she is currently interested in AI and its important brands in the future. Like I said, and they are like, uh, you know, all. I think some of the best brands in the major entertainment industry is some place where she made her career in and she continues to build on that. And right now, uh, she's going to talk to us on uh, the uh, digital content in uh, uh, you know two-sided market. Like I said, you know, this is something that each one of us are part of it. And some of you are business leaders, as business leaders, you might like to get a lot of insights about not just the consumer behavior and consumption patterns there, but also in terms of pricing, right? And ultimately, like uh, Kanika uh, 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 was doing for a long time and including the current role, monetization part of it. Ultimately, it is all about, you know, creating some key that, you know, each one of you work for. And that's where, you know, that uh, you know this topic very well fits into it. And uh, let's welcome uh, uh, Kanika Mohan for this wonderful evening and look forward to having wonderful lecture from you, Kanika. Thank you, Dr. Nagendra. Uh, that was really a long career. I, 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 was, um, I was going down my own little memory lane. Uh, thank you <laughs> for the opportunity. Thanks, Times Pro. Uh, actually, I must mention that Nandita has been chasing me for a long time. So this is for her. <laughs> I couldn't say no. And uh, good evening to all those who are listening to me. Um, thank you for joining on, on a Saturday. I'll try to make it uh, quick and interesting from all that I have learned. Um, happy to answer any questions or the end of the session, or you may stop me midway. Uh, I like it when I'm interacting with my audience. Um, sure, let's begin. Dr. Nagendra, if you can just put the slide. Um, happy to start the presentation. Just a moment. We're going. Yeah, can you see it? Yes. Okay, so uh, yes, that's me embracing uncharted territories. Um, I do lots of things at V, uh, all of them new businesses. So it's as one goes. I'm there to build the narratives. Uh, I primarily am, yes, a master scuba diver trainer. Uh, I train people all across the world and in India. Uh, a chef, uh, um, love to cook and currently a cancer survivor fighting cancer. So um, that's me. What are we talking about today? Um, uh, you know, again, uh, let's just understand that. So what we're going to do is we're going to talk about um, two-sided market. What is the two-sided market? Yeah. 
Uh, what are the dynamics of digital platform in two-sided markets? How different is digital content creation and consumption in two-sided markets? Uh, how does first-party content coordination happen in this market? And the eight types of digital marketing. Um, I don't think so. Any of you who are listening to me would have not come across uh, brands like Google, Airbnb, Facebook, Amazon, Snapchat, Netflix, YouTube, to say to name them. Um, these are the top brands in the world, across the world, who are great examples of um, this two-sided market strategy. Um, if you could just move forward. Um, now, everybody better listen. <laughs> there is a question in the end. I know it's a Saturday evening. So like I said, I'll try to make it interesting. Uh, please move forward, Dr. Nagendra. Um, we'll ask the question. So uh, do we know Seema Auntie? Now, everybody must be wondering on a Saturday evening, she's talking about Seema Auntie. Who's Seema Auntie? So um, next slide, please. So Seema Auntie is basically a matchmaker, um, not relevant for this forum, but a great example of a two-sided market. How, how, how so? Um, if you click on the link, Dr. Nagendra, it'll show us why do I say that? Um, just, uh, just play it, it'll just play on the slide. Yeah, if you look at the, just keep playing on this. Uh, if you look at the link, you will see that, uh, why is she a two-sided market great example? She basically is a platform who bridges between NRIs looking for Indian soulmate and Indians looking for an NRI soulmate. Doctor, you'll have to click. Yeah, Indians looking for an NRI soulmate. Uh, the best example in this country where uh, most people have traditional ways of forming matrimonial bonds uh, she is an epitome of two-sided market, and she's the one who uses both the parties all across, earns money from both of them. Everybody is gaining something or the other. And of course, she's the go-getter. Where do you know her from? You saw her in a Netflix show, uh, which had uh, all the Bollywood ladies, and she was a part of that show. I will ask you in the end of the session what that show was. Doctor, if you could just go ahead, please. Um, another example is Uber. So uh, I'm certain that all of us must have gone through this whole piece where, you know, you're running to office, you get into a taxi and the guy's like, Kaha jana? or the guy's like, no, I'm not interested unless, unless it's a huge, um, you know, if you're going to give me 500 and thousand bucks. Uh, that was how life was in came Uber. So from Kali Pili saying no to Uber saying yes. Uh, I know some of you must be wondering even in today's time Uber does cancel. Yes, it does. Uh, but our everyday travel, so problem statement was, how do you travel effectively? What do you do? Uh, so your everyday travel changed with the marketplace and Uber is that marketplace. It doesn't own any fleet of its cars. Um, it just bridges the gap between people like you and me who want to go wherever from one destination to another, and it gives employment to people who own taxis. Yeah. Uh, doctor, could you just move forward, please? So like I said, I'm going to take this as an example. It's my favorite example to give. So what does Uber do? So like I said, it makes income flexibility for uh, people who are looking for employment. There is no boss, you're your own boss, you work in your own time, uh, you get money. Uh, what does it do for people like us? Uh, no hassle of car ownership. You don't have to go and get a loan if you don't want to. You don't have to uh, have uh, your capital invested in a uh, depreciating asset. Uh, you don't have to bother about inefficient riding. You just quickly, you know, get onto the app, download the app, tuck, 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 wherever you need to go. And there, voila, you have somebody or the other at your doorstep most of the time. So I've taken an example of Uber, but it obviously would have all the car companies or car rental companies or companies who are offering services to the consumer for a ride. Uh, just if you could move forward, please. So as I said, um, again, a great example of two-sided marketplace. Like I said, um, I've taken digital first products. Uh, where did these digital products come from? These digital products came from problem, problem statements of what we face in our life. Um, whether it's food, whether it's travel, whether it's um, home. So for food, it would be something like Zomato. Uh, for home, it will be housing.com. 
et cetera, et cetera. So these are markets where a buyer, a seller are all coming in together on a platform. And that's what comprises a two-sided market. Doctor, please go ahead. And it is also known as double-sided market because the way I explain, I'll give you an example of, uh, it's okay. I'll give you an example of Airbnb. Um, doctor, if you could just move the slide. Again, um, I was using Airbnb about 20 years back or 17 years back where it was like, you, you know, you just get onto somebody's couch and look what the company has done all across the globe. Uh, it allows people to earn an income for extra space in their home. In fact, I was traveling to Serbia last year and uh, one of the things in, in, in Belgrade is people on the weekend rent their homes and go and live with friends and family because they all want to make a quick buck. Uh, what does it do for people like us? And travel has changed over the years. You know, everybody today can do travel, which is far more accessible for multiple things, right? I mean, whether it's your earning capacity, whether it's your need or hunger for travel, uh, looking after the world, I think entertainment and media has really, really ensured this segment grows. And Airbnb, what does it do? It just gives you unique experiences um, to be able to go live in other people's home all across the globe. Uh, I think the last time I lived in a hotel uh, was seven, eight years back. I always get into an Airbnb and get all my, uh, you know, ways of being very close to the country or city, if in India, um, I'm visiting. Zomato, I, I spoke about, it's my favorite example. I love these guys. Um, uh, so for example, Zomato, um, I live in Andheri. Um, there are about 500 restaurants here. Imagine if these restaurants had to speak to Kanika and the likes of Kanika, what do they do? They send the pamphlets, they send SMS, um, you know, they will wait for walk-ins, etc. They will do advertising, traditional or non-traditional. And there you have Zumato or ONDC today or Swiggy, which comes, uh, what does it do? It brings a market for uh, buyers and sellers. So sellers are reaching to multiple people without hassle of, you know, infra, delivery staff, no such thing. They don't even have to pick up phone, uh, you know, if they need to. You get onto the Zomato app, one registers themselves, the other goes to Zomato and lo and behold, you have plethora of opportunities of what you want to eat, depending on your mood, day, whatever. So, and you get food from the comfort of home. So in both ways, both the markets, both these guys, the buyer and seller are the ones who are gaining something or the other out of the other person. And Zomato, which is the platform, of course, is earning money from the sellers not the buyers and from buyers they don't they give the service free but then there is something known as advertising so they are sitting with marketing data they know what Kanika likes to eat on a weekend what does she like to do on a weekday she is an enthusiast who likes to eat um, fresh fruit so they speak to me via their communication in a very innovative way on a day-to-day -day basis depending on my mood now these are some great examples of how you, as a platform, if you're able to solve a need. So this, this, this entire business uh, in 2022 at the end was about a $40.2 billion uh, economy, so to speak. And um, like I said, what are the revenue models for um, a two-sided market? Commission, Uber, taking example, they, they charge about 25% per ride from the taxi guy. Data monetization, they exactly know where I go, how much is my afford? Uh, how much can I afford? Zomato knows what I do. What is the kind of spends I have? What kind of food I like? Um, am I doing ticketing from their events? They have my entire profiling and therefore they can always cross sell and upsell to me. Uh, premium services, um, on a lighter note, Tinder. So they will charge you uh, two and a half thousand every month and they will ask you to subscribe to their service if you want to be reached out by a lot of people. Um, another example is a pay to use is shadi.com. Um, you obviously can go and uh, subscribe on shadi.com, load in your profile, but if you want to be on the top or if you want to be able to connect with people, et cetera, you need to pay a premium. These are great examples of, uh, so these are the way brands uh, earn revenue from here. Uh, doctor, if you could move forward, please. <clears throat> now, what are double-sided markets? Same, a two-sided market, which is basically an intermediary platform that brings buyers and sellers together to develop and share value. 
through a network. Uh, if you move forward, please. Uh, what does, why is it required? Um, why can't people connect directly? Why can't uh, the Lokhandwala in Andheri West, Zomato, uh, sorry, uh, McDonald call me? Sure, but how many connectors are he, is he going to call? So what happens here is that there are multiple options for the buyers. And there is a large pool of available consumers for the sellers. So, and on the back of a platform. So again, my favorite example, Zomato. You get onto Zomato and you say, hey, I'm gonna move for biryani today. Now, you don't have to eat the same biryani every day. You will have in your location, in your area, in your city, 50 or 40 people or shops who would be selling biryani. And how do you decide? So you are deciding those biryanis from branding, from uh, rating, from uh, customer feedback, et cetera. And therefore you choose that. What are, the and what are the sellers doing? The sellers are able to reach multiple set of people. So the same shop here in one corner, if had an opportunity of 500 people, thanks to a platform is able to reach to 5,000 people. And that's the beauty and the joy of internet. Yeah, everything and anything is accessible through and through. Again, a great example of Zomato, and I'm going to take a minute. I know you might be thinking I'm obsessed with this platform, and I truly am. Um, India is a country which is known for its delicacies and food. So Zomato bought uh, the platform and they launched a service where you were able to order food from everywhere. So if you um, fancy the biryani from Lucknow or the Hyderabadi biryani from Hyderabad or the Roshagulla from Calcutta, all of those are possible through the platform in a go. So that's the beauty of what a two-sided market can do. Uh, doctor, please move forward. Um, as I said, um, again, another example, Mindra. Um, imagine, I, imagine I'm wearing this dress. I've gone and looked in my local, uh, you know, Lokanwala market, the famous market in, in, in Bombay. I go look there and I'm like, ah, okay, how many shops can I really go? Yeah, I don't have the time. I don't have the effort costs as well uh and there i go i just download my Instagram. again a platform they don't make anything they don't own anything they are just connecting the buyers and the sellers and you're able to get a variety uh sometimes variety can be an issue but uh it's a great way so whether it is from the perspective of cost whether it's from the perspective of discounts whether it is from the perspective of uh even designs and um what better way of doing that by can we do that in the market wherever we are going to the market? Sure, we can. Um, we live in a very, very busy world. And um, most of us go the digital way. And why do we do that? We do that because, like I said, these two-sided markets, and in this case, of Maitra, involve, what do they do? They've also started getting brands from all across the globe. Do I really need to go to Paris to buy myself a Prada or a Gucci or wherever? I can just go on Maitra and do that. And I promise you, you'll get better deals there. So these are, uh, what I've tried to do here is um, explain to all of you that we are already so in it with all the brands which revolve around us, housing.com, for example. Um, do you actually want to call your typical next door chap and say, hey, you know what, Meghar Pujarin? No need. Just log on to housing.com or multiple other sites or Facebook marketplace in your city. Put in, you can buy, a, you know, a house, you can rent a house. You don't need any more to pay to the agent. They don't charge you money. Facebook makes the money through listings. Facebook is the guy who's actually bringing the buyer, the seller on. So everybody is in the same place and everybody is getting something or the other. Dr. Move forward, please. Like I said, and why, why, why do people do these? Um, the joy of two-sided market is that uh, you can better your product by the day, by the volume. So for example, options of cars for Uber, types of booking. Do you want a daily booking? Do you want a monthly booking? Do you want an hourly booking? Or, oh, I had a presentation today at six o'clock. I was somewhere else. I can book my Uber ride at six. Quality, what kind of cars? And the, so that's for the user. What about the service provider? I mean, Uber doesn't have to buy 10,000, 20,000 cars, right? They've just created a model where it gives employment to people. They own their cars. Uber is just bringing the ecosystem together 
and from analytics is learning how to make money for themselves and for everybody else. Zomato, I've already spoken about, like I said, it's my favorite example. So you will find it a reputation, uh, but I enjoy this brand simply for the fact that how indigenous they are when it comes to food. So like I said, I think they're one of the first brands in this country who bought every kind of food to this app and ensured that the audience or consumers rather consume them irrespective of wherever they were. So the Fafla or the, you know, Bhel um, Puri of, uh, of North or the Mishti Doev of Kolkata all lost their boundaries of those regions thanks to uh, Zomato. Uh, Dr. Move forward, please. Now, what does all of this, which I spoke about in past 20, 20 minutes do? So the platform effect, the network effect. So what do they do? They all lead to business automation. It's actually, there is AI, which is reading, what does the consumer want? What is that I'm able to give to the consumer? When I create FOMO, I create need, I create necessity, I create these pockets. And this is how the network works. This is how the platform effect happens. So the trick, or rather, Dr. Please move forward. Rather, I mean, now uh, you'll wonder, uh, what is a network? It basically means the value of the platform basis, the number of buyers, sellers, or users leveraging it. Let me give you an example of Amazon. I recently am doing my home. Um, so I decided to look for a bed. I looked here, there, everywhere. And then I went on Amazon. And my, you might wonder, Amazon, who goes by? Got a great deal. Went and looked after people who were looking, giving. So I was getting discount. I was getting, I saw how many people had bought that bet, uh, et cetera, et cetera. All the parameters and filters which I, uh, which were important to me. Now, I as a consumer chose from ratings, from rankings, from feedback, from consumers like yourself uh, on choosing this bet. Uh, that is what the network effort, effect does. It primarily ensures that your platform is important when the number of users or buyers both keep increasing. So it's it's literally like the buyer scheme, Dr. Could you move forward? It, it literally is like a chicken and an egg situation. So, but the network effect does not kick in day one. So it's not like, a, you know, the dynamics of entry for digital platforms. I'm going to talk about it for two minutes. Um, it's, it's, it's not like, uh, you know, it begins from the day, okay, I downloaded my app, I loaded a platform and uh, the buyers are there, sellers are there, both are there. It doesn't work like that. Let's just understand how does this network effect work. Um, doctor, please move forward. Like I said, it's a buyer first, seller first. Um, I'll ask all your views. What do you feel about it? Uh, these are particularly in my observations, if I may say. Um, what happens here? Um, it involves basically figuring out of which side of uh, marketplace does a platform want to hinge to? Is it a buyer or is it a seller? Now, why, why these things? Because you have to ensure the quality standards. Platform leakage. Konica today calls Urban Clap for, let's say, fixing everything in a house. And suddenly Konica says, hey, chap, you know what? Why don't you come home directly? I don't need to bring you, do stuff with you on Urban Clap. I'll give you whatever is your rate. Uh, he says, yes, ma'am. I take my phone off, put my phone pay, pay the guy for the services he offered me. Lo behold. Now that's known as platform leakage. Now, so these are some of the um, repercussions, if I may say so, uh, which happened during this time. Also building trust and um, platform leakage, like I said, um, uh, please do move forward. Um, when you see no one joins in until everyone joins. I'll give you a great example. Again, a favorite example of mine. WhatsApp. Uh, two years back, there was a campaign which was going on that WhatsApp leaks private information. Uh, it's not yours. Now, WhatsApp did multiple campaigns to obviously try not to move um, so that it doesn't lose its audience. What happened in came Telegram. Uh, one moment, 
half of the world was moving to Telegram that, oh my God, my data is not going to be private anymore. Sure, that was one part. But what did WhatsApp do? It displays the entire SMS ecosystem. You and I, I cannot remember the last time I looked at an SMS besides whether my bank details or uh, important details where I'm getting an OTP. That's what WhatsApp has done. So even though there was a breach of trust for the consumer, a telegram was not able to displace that because it became a habit. It became so, I'm sure all of you must be seeing that there are multiple campaigns happening with WhatsApp. One of them I recently saw with Ranbir Singh, um, which is a conversation for another day. But this is what they're trying to do. They're trying to build the trust with their viewers. So there were users, they came, like any other platform, people moved to another, which is Telegram, but they remain in this business and they are the largest platform in this country and across the globe. So um, uh, doctor, please move forward. How do we, how do these platforms do that? For example, let's take one of the examples, let's subsidization. Um, giving both the buyer and the seller tangible reasons to join a platform. So for example, uh, it's, a, it's a buyer's market, right? I mean, I want to go to work from one destination to another. And I say, hey, book an Uber ride at seven kilometers per hour and log in and put in your promo. Or if I want to eat something, ta-da, ta-da. Or no bargains, no fuss. I don't want to, I hate, you know, getting down my house if if I don't have my, you know, chauffeur. I, I don't like to take a car, really. I, I, I'm like, I'd rather give two bucks more. At least I go in peace. Or AC car rides in five minutes. Now, these are, very, very important aspects for all of us and across different cohorts. For some people, uh, uh, cost is a matter and therefore book an Uber ride at seven kilometer per hour is really, really interesting. First ride free. For some people who don't want to have the hassle a no bargaining, no first campaign works. For some people, they say, I get an AC ride, great man. I like it. Now in the same way, what, are, was, it, what was it doing to the um, seller? Um, so many Uber guys or ladies today are entrepreneurs because of this. They're working, they, they, they get loans, they're getting onto the business, they're driving, they're independent. And this is where you will always have more drivers wanting to come on the platform. And therefore you have more people also wanting to use a private ride because you know it for, for both of these people there is something or the other more buyers more sellers so all are in a happy space um, doctor please move forward again value creation um it's very important like i said for brands to make value uh, by giving them information for example empowering users with technology and information airbnb I want to go to Mykonos and I go on the Airbnb app and I say, oh, what a beautiful home. I look into it and then you have all the information, one queen bed, you know, these are the facilities they have, this girl, guy or this girl is a super host. Um, these are the services which involve, there are 32 services, ta -da, ta -da, ta -da, and the work. And then you are able to understand what is the dollar you're spending and why. Yeah. So why do people go on Airbnb? Because they see value. And this value creation is a process where you're actually creating one portion is a FOMO and another portion is giving information to the buyer about what to do. Uh, doctor, please move forward. Trust. Um, most often than not, what happens is um, I, let's say you ordered some food. You didn't like the food. Uh, and a Zomato, you will call Zomato and give them rating on the app and they will say, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry that you had such a terrible experience. We will refund your about and they will send it back to you back. Now, what are they doing? They're not the ones who are cooking. They're creating a feeling of ownership without actually owning. They're not the ones who, who are, uh, you know, making the food, but they want you to be with them. They want to be a part of your everyday life when it comes to food consumption and everything else, yeah. Um, doctor, please move forward. User experience. Um, again, a topic in itself. Um, 
we all we all are narcissistic people we like things which look pretty we like things where uh, it's not confusing for us um, everything is visual therefore video so simple intuitive design seamless journeys build habit it's simple zomato for example keeps doing these features for example filter search categories information about food you've not known search and explore new stuff they use geolocation that kanika is in uh, you know andheri lokhanwala so which is the guy and they know that kanika loves sweet she can't eat sweet so but they know that kanika loves sweet so they will send me suggestions of uh, dessert which is either keto or sugar free so look at kanika and look at them getting all of this information from me and sending it to me creating fomo so that i order it um also about what's happening with my food so the entire process where you are involved from the word go it's literally like i'm sitting here on my dining table and saying you know what i want to eat pizza today and you know now in a normal home what we do we run and we say hey you know hey mom or whoever is cooking at home um you know i want to eat my pizza where is it bring it so it's literally that that you're looking okay nine minutes 10 minutes okay on the door so that's what a user experience does doctor please move forward so now i'm going to talk about a little bit of i'm i'm conscious of the time i'm going to talk about uh, double sided marketplace and in the business of content um i chose not to speak about content because everything which i spoke about is actually content it's not just videos doctor move forward and what happens in um look at the number of brands here uh, you can move forward on this look at the number of the brands here what happens is that 70% of the time none of us know what to watch whether it is net which has the best recommendation engine in the world uh, and in music it's um, reso or spotify we still don't know what to watch you will always be working and figuring out on a weekend 15 minutes 20 minutes you'll be scrolling what do i watch what do i watch what happens then uh, doctor please move forward <clears throat> now what happens in something like this is when you have so what is happening here again how how so give an example of actually netflix it's again a two sided marketplace so what is happening here there is a content aggregator who's basically aggregating all of the can content building increased viewership so that the more number of people get onto a platform subscribe it watch it free that means it brings roi for them through ads or through subscriptions um it also gives best of content options it also brings affordability for price doctor move forward what happens here what does a content aggregator do so there is a platform and there is a content aggregator right doctor move forward now what is happening here actually so what do content creators do um please do step forward now let's understand a content aggregation is primarily collecting multiple set of content from multiple sources and then providing it to users like you and me whereas content curation is collection of content under one single source doctor just move forward and you will have the entire slide here what do people uh, just uh, back please what do people do so what do organizations do so there is plethora of content they bifurcate so there are machines and people manually actually bifurcating the content through language through journal what did you watch last what did you not watch what kind of uh, what kind of mood are you in are you in mood for romance are you in mood for horror are you in mood for adult content so on so forth and or are you moved to so that creators for creating all of this and all of this is being brought to the platform primarily from your historic viewership uh, your organized data um, what we call in our language from the perspective of meta and we marry all of that with the aggregator platform to ensure that you know what to watch please move forward now um i truly believe that uh, it's 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 not uh, just a partnership that you know you had people who were creating content or producing content and then you had aggregators and then life is over it's a part of collaboration i'll give you an example um let me give you an example of two brands one is startup binge uh, a brand i truly respect uh, what do they do they are aggregator platforms they bring in they bring in ott partnerships from all across give it to you at a certain price what are they doing they are creating business from b2b they're giving it to b2c 
and they don't produce anything. They are just the platform which is providing you X number of OTT subscriptions in Tata Play Binge at a certain dollar price. Let's give you an example of VMTV, uh, the brand I work in, uh, we movies and TV. This is exactly what we do. We have partnerships from all across the brands in India. We bring them on one platform, which is again VMTV. If you are a V consumer, you're able to watch all of this content free or in the cases it may be. So to me and to all of us, it is a collaboration and it's a multi-level uh, collaboration from B2B, from B2C and from the perspective of the consumer of how he or she is getting at a dollar price what they're paying for. Uh, Dr. Move forward, please. <clears throat> Now, like I said, uh, I'm going to spend a little bit time here because a lot of people think that, hey, I have content and I'm just going to put it on the platform all as well. Uh, not so simple. Um, content organizing behave is, is on user behavior. It's just not about content sharing. It's about real-time viewership, analyzing what does Kanika and cohorts of Kanika want. India is such a big country. Uh, once upon a time in India, people spoke their languages and they were not very particularly keen or interested in other languages. But uh, I think Hollywood or I rather Netflix, I have immense respect for the brand, has broken those barriers. I mean, I watch more Korean, Korean and Spanish than I watch Hindi. Yeah. Now, what's happening here? Language barriers are no more. So your content habits are changing. Uh, this is possible only through exchange of data and through learnings, right? Uh, multiple content partners are pitching for the same content to attract various users. Now, this is what ag aggregators do. Um, Doctor, please move forward. What happens here uh, primarily is that um, what what happens here is primarily that when you have partners, for example, Netflix. I don't know how many of you know, and I'm certain that you do. Netflix once upon a time used to be a DVD rental company. Like a typical DVD rental company, you would go into the company, you would go into the shop, rent a DVD for a dollar price, and off you go. Two tapes, to a platform, to English content, to content from across the globe, to advertising, to games. So what are they doing? They're bringing to all the producers, directors, independent directors, producers all across the globe can now showcase their wares. And people across the globe, like you and me, can view those wares, of course, at a cost. Uh, but that's the joy. That's pretty much the joy of what uh, a network uh, market can do. Now, for example, uh, what are the benefits of two-sided uh, markets? I mean, like I said, uh, before I go here, I want to spend a minute here. Um, multiple options, hassle-free, um, quality, you will always have buyers looking for quality products because they're people rating them. So they will always, always ensure that the quality is maintained. Um, what happens then? There's more demand. There are growth opportunities. Uh, it saves time. What, what happens to the person or, or the marketplace? It low cost, the network effect, possibility of literally Anything and everything you can find. Now, network effect is primarily, um, I call it actually network external, externality, where goods and services have become, how do I put it, um, more valuable when there are more and more users. I mean, have you ever heard, I mean, for example, look at social media. Facebook went launched, everybody was on Facebook, the orchids of the world went off. Uh, Facebook created uh, a platform where you and I and our friends and their friends and their friends and ta-da, ta-da, all of that network was there and you were able to exchange people, barriers, there was no barrier of language, there was no barrier of countries, etc. And there they were. And uh, of course, um, I'm definitely old, but the young ones suddenly realized that the parents were on uh, Facebook as well and then they moved to Instagram. So, but like I said, <laughs> everything has its pros and cons. I'm going to take five minutes and talk about the eight types of digital marketing, which is the affiliate marketing, content marketing, email marketing, mobile, paper, click. 
what do you do with SUSM and marketing analytics in, the, in, in this market? I'm not going to give definitions because these are such in-depth topics that it, it will take me a few sessions. But what I'm going to do, I'll take one example each and quickly run us through because I'm privy that it's quarter to seven. Doctor, please move forward. Okay, so affiliate marketing Amazon, great example. What does Amazon do? They run the most wonderful affiliate network. Simple, you have a phone, you have a face, doesn't even matter. You use products, you go use your product, download the product, uh, upload it on the server, give your referral rings. And if any of us watch that and buy that product, the person who's done this, the person who's uploaded gets the money. Amazon gets a lead. Of course, they sold a product. The buyer gets what he or she is looking at. Uh, we may call it, um, I would not like to call it uh, influencer marketing, but kind of. And that is what the best example of affiliate marketing will be, or actually influencer marketing. I mean, every if you go on Instagram and you see every influencer in this country is trying to sell something or the other. And we all are people who like to follow or look at other people and say, hey, this looks like some Kanika. Where did she get it from? So again, that's one of the way um, two-sided brands, they use affiliate marketing, content marketing. Uh, no shakes here. Like I said, I was talking about movies and TV and Tata Play. Again, an aggregator model, two-sided market. Both get content from another app, provide it to the consumer on their platforms for a dollar price. Both don't own anything. The, the consumer is getting cheap deal for all the OTT apps. Uh, the OTT platforms are getting more revenue and the network or the platforms, in this case, Tata Player and Binge and B Movies and TV are the platforms which are marrying both and earning money. So uh, doctor, please move forward. So that's an example of how content marketing is used. Everybody uses content marketing actually. Uh, pay per click, um, customers looking to speak in public speaking coaches. So somebody was looking for a public speaking coach. In fact, I was looking to, um, you know, uh, learn French. So I went off, I went on Google and I said, hey, uh, give me good uh, French teachers near my area. And I had a list of academies. So whether it was Corsia, whether it was a couple of other duty platforms, some French teachers around the area. And there it was. So I went and clicked on one. So again, side two sided example, how uh, you have Google, because that's what I'm looking at. Now you have advertisers. So these coaches have obviously, or these platforms have already registered there or are advertising there. Kanika, who's a user, goes and clicks on it, creates a, creates a lead for uh, the coach. Google earns money. Coach gets a client. Kanika gets uh, a service. And obviously Google is learning what are Kanika's needs, et cetera. And therefore in later part, it is in its analysis, learning what all does Kanika do, and therefore it throws ads to Kanika, hoping that Kanika is going to buy something because it really does know that Kanika, these are Kanika's life, this is her profile, this is what she does, right? SEO and SEM, we all are a preacher today. We like to look at things from the perspective of we want to know. Um, so for example, the new show of Virgin River, uh, you want to, I was talking to my friend and say, hey, have you seen Virgin River? I'm like, I don't know Virgin River. Yeah, there, Virgin River, Google, you know, Virgin River, oh, Netflix. Same, again, in content marketing, this is a very, very important mix where you are able to crawl content, you're able to be in the top, uh, you know, top three links, you're able to uh, do your entire ASO or SEO or SEM in order to create, um, you know, words, category words, so that every time a user is looking for something specific uh, to a content, to a name, it throws in first and you are the preferred brand of choice. Uh, marketing analytics, again, I gave an example of Google. Um, my favorite brand actually, I mean, you know, one fine day I actually realized that, uh, you know, I, I don't like too much of uh, internet nowadays. So I, turned off all my browsing history, this, that, or the other. And I was traveling somewhere and I couldn't for the life of me, Google Maps wouldn't take me there because I had already turned it off. So it couldn't learn. So it didn't know what were the cuts. And then I realized that, wow, 
all these brands are so much into our lives. I mean, imagine I'm sitting here in my house on an internet, uh, on the internet, talking to all of you on Zoom, which is a platform which doesn't take money from either you or from me, unless until, of course, it was a paid subscription. And all of us are benefiting from that. So I think uh, that's where, uh, Dr. Please move forward. That's, that's where I wanted to bring this conversation to an end that everything in this network marketing or two-sided market is about awareness, which leads to consideration, which leads to a purchase, which leads to a product experience, which leads to again, a repurchase or a dissonance. So all of these tools in these brands work beautifully. They have to work hand in hand. Uh, they have to work for you. For example, Zomato again, hey, you, yes, you. Pizza misses you, Barkha. It just brings a smile. I mean, always brings a smile to me when I'm talking uh, about Zomato because this is one brand where I feel I'm literally talking to my friend next door. Um, Dr. Lu move forward. So this is where I want to sum this conversation. Um, it is five minutes to seven. I, like I said, there will always be a quiz in the beginning. I want to now, um, I'm going to open the floor um, for questions. I also want to know, tell me your favorite uh, double-sided marketplace apps and why. And um, one challenge and one boom of this business. I think uh, I've, I've, I've explained through examples. Thank you for listening to me and thank you for your patience. I hope um, I didn't put you all to sleep. Thank you. Open to answer for any questions anybody has. Thank you, uh, um, Kanika. It's absolutely interesting. And while we wait for uh, you know uh, 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 everyone to you know uh, respond to your question, uh, there are quite a few questions and. We are just you know about to hit the seven o'clock time and uh, get going with uh, one of the questions uh, right away. Is it okay with you? Great. Of course. Please. I think one. Yeah, I think one of the things that you talked about in the first point, in fact, was the subsidization, uh, Kanika, right? And then uh, we get to see a uh, uh, very intriguing, I would say, in one sense, because if you look at a, a you know a, a product like a, a newspaper, like for example, Times of India or any other newspaper, right? Like you get definitely get to see there is a subsidized because readers actually get subsidized because you know a lot of thing is coming from uh, uh, the the advertisers. It's absolutely yes. understandable. But if you replicate the same thing vis a vis a Wikipedia, if you have opened Wikipedia in the last few days or last few months, especially now it's come to the beautiful, uh, very painful actually when you see that you know uh, can you uh, 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 you know you, we need your support even as as uh, five rupees can you support uh, with uh, us or maybe 100 rupees or 300 rupees what do we you know you can that's one that we get to see that's i think all of us use most of us use it right and then you know how difficult it is to produce that very interesting content a very authentic content in fact in fact people do refer to it right that's one part of it the second part in the same breath if i have to say it the guardian another newspaper from london again it's the same so if you like look at it again it is some caution from there because it says that if you want a quality journalism you need to support us and the only way to do is you know, subscribe to it and digital content all that kind of thing so therefore now how do you see this subsidization going and because when you have world-class content you know if you want uh, the, the, this newspaper right Right, uh, newspapers or a Wikipedia or for that matter Guardian to produce definitely they need a lot of you know loads of the pipeline of uh, cash flows there but then that has to come from somebody has to fund it because it, it cannot be just coming from the sweat uh, equity any longer right? that's good the honeymoon is done so how do you bridge this uh, I would say uh, uh, you know the dichotomy uh, uh, of Kanika interesting question actually <laughs> thank you for asking so um, so all the examples I gave you so I, I want to go back to the to the root, I want to go back to the problem statement. All yeah. the brands I told you uh, began with something we're looking for, right? Whether all the examples I take, Zumato, food, Uber, travel, housing.com, for housing. Let's take an example of Guardian. Uh, it's 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 Guardian is a great newspaper when it comes to serious journalism. Uh, you know, they they're authentic, they write well but they are trying to, are they trying to speak to everybody? I think that's where brands give it a miss. They try to go mass market, but this is not a brand for mass market. 
Guardian is a brand which is a very reputed brand where when they talk or when they report an article, it's thoroughly it's done. The journalists are world-class journalists. There is no saga or singing. But what are brands doing? What, what do they do? Yes, they are forced to ask for subscription. But in a country like ours or anywhere in the world, uh, Dr. Nagendra, you'll, you'll realize that people don't like to pay. In fact, you will see that the numbers which come from Europe are dwindling, still there. Whereas mm -hmm. India as a market, everything is free. We all are party to the same problem. You know, every time I speak to specifically in the some forums, I say that we have spoiled a consumer for so much of choice that they just want everything free. Do you get a food from Zomato free, Dr. Nagendra? <laughs> or do you get free, um, you know, rentals? Or do you get a discount on your next rent you were looking for? No, you pay for it. There are no free lunch. There are no free lunches. So why right. should there be free lunches when you want to read content? I mean, there are enough and more people in this country who would like that exactly. kind of reading or journalism. So from the word go, I would reach out just to them. Yeah. I would not talk to perhaps, uh, let's say, the likes of Kanika. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's one part. Uh, Wikipedia, another. Wikipedia, uh, a very small example. I I'll call it more of a listing or when I want to go and check out facts and figures mm -hmm. uh, their business model is always going to be it's not actually a two-sided business model a one-sided business model because Kanika is you 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 very uh, you know beautifully uh, explain my life career journey in 20 of 20 years now if somebody wanted to look me up Wikipedia why does Kanika need Wikipedia because she wants people to know great it's a need-based platform right it's right. not a platform which is uh, a necessity. Roti, kapra, makan are three main ingredients where everybody is trying to fill in. So, like I said in one of the, when I said subsidization, I said also in the same line, in a two network market, what is important and critical is that the buyers and sellers are all equally interested. Yeah. And therefore, you will always have a win win. I hope Very I answered. Good. Yep. Absolutely. Very interesting perspective, uh, I think, uh, for both of them, in fact. I think I come to the maybe the last question because of lack of time and now that we are hitting uh, the button there. I think uh, from the point of view of uh, another interesting uh, sector is the healthcare sector, uh, uh, right? Uh, because how does this two-sided market work? I'm, and I'm coming from a different, uh, again, you know, a lot of uh, things have been written about it. A lot of research has gone into it. In, in terms of uh, uh, the fact that can uh, people are asking basically this question, right? Can this two-sided market work in the healthcare sector? Because please remember the more the content that, you know, in towards the end of your presentation, you're talking about the digital content, you know, you're creating for it. The more the content that you create uh, in the healthcare sector, that I think uh, it is other one is that also a lot of work because for example let's say you keep feeding the customers about maybe a you know, blood pressure you know maybe sugar you know, a lot of other things right then therefore you are you feeding a happy you know moment or are you feeding that you know the scary moments kind of thing so therefore how do you look at this two-sided markets uh, uh, in the case of uh, healthcare sector i'll give you an example and i'll give you an example uh, i'll give you two examples in this and they both are personal to me um, one is farm easy and another example I'm going to give you a rather situation is COVID. Mm -hmm. In came COVID three years back and uh, suddenly all of us, most of us had COVID. You couldn't go to a doctor and there you had one platform. You could get onto the platform, book an appointment with a doctor because perhaps your own doctor had COVID and you couldn't get out. And uh, you had a platform, let's call it PharmEasy. You had all the doctors listed there depending on what your issue was and you are the patient. Mm. you're charging the platform is charging nothing the platform is getting both of us one a patient and another a doctor of course then it yields to uh, you know supplying medication etc right if that was not the case can you imagine what would have happened Absolutely. that's one mm. two i'll give you an example i was i was detected with cancer last year oh so funny. <laughs> yeah i i said i'm fighting uh, cancer right now and um i live in Bombay. I live in a country where uh, I have the best of the treatments. Uh, when I went, I start, when I was diagnosed, I started looking online and I went on PharmEasy. I looked after doctors. I spoke to multiple of them. I obviously couldn't go to all of them. I, I consulted them through this. I, of course, went to um, Reliance Hospital. I started taking medication. There were medications which 
in city like Bombay, you can't get. In came Farmeasy. I put in my medication. I put in my uh, source of what I require. 48 hours in my house. I still struggle. So I think, and because you asked me about uh, this sector healthcare, and this is especially because it's close to my heart, I've, I've, uh, I'm living it. What it does is that it is, imagine the potential it has for people who cannot have or don't have access to hospitals and you can consult a doctor. So imagine somebody living in Lucknow cannot go to a fancy Reliance hospital uh, in Bombay and uh, show to one of the best cancer surgeons. I had that privilege because I live here, but the platform makes it possible for them to go and consult the doctor online. Absolutely. But uh, uh, so I think uh, on a different note, uh, and so sorry to hear that, but nevertheless, you know, best wishes to you. But I, what I want to actually share with you is we had the pleasure of hosting uh, the co-founder and CEO of one of the best cancer hospitals in uh, Bangalore. Uh, his name is uh, Suresh Ramo. In case if there is something, uh, and, you know, they're doing extremely well and it's a very up, uh, it's like a startup there, but they're doing extremely well as far as, uh, you know, the, this, uh, you know, the, the side of the medicine, medicine is concerned. And in case if there's something, please do let us know. But from all of us, thank you so much. And I really appreciate your time for us. And uh, you know, uh, uh, like somebody has already written, I think uh, I must read out. I don't know if you happen to read out. This is from Mr. Bala Janaika. And I think you, he truly, I think, uh, uh, you know, uh, resonates uh, the rest of the uh, participants' uh, sentiments there. Thank you very much. One of the finest marketing webinars in a short span of time. Thank you once again, Kanika. That's what he has written. I'm sure that's the case with everyone who has attended today's session. But uh, wonderful having you. Um, and then also with uh, the kind of passion, the kind of uh, spirit that you brought into this one. I think that speaks volumes about not just uh, what you do, but about how you do it. I think that's what makes all the difference. And uh, look forward to uh, uh, hearing your story uh, again. And uh, please do count on us for any support that you think we can be of help for any one of us. Uh, definitely, uh, we'll, we are there, um, Kanika. Thank you so very much. Thank you, everybody else, for listening to me. I hope this session was interesting and I bought some perspective. Uh, and we all learn. You have a pleasant evening and have a happy weekend. Good night. Thank you so much once again. Thank you, Nika. Bye-bye.